Greetings, family, and welcome to the New Reality Forum. I am Brother Rob, and I'm excited to be here for another dynamic episode today. We have a very, very, very special guest here today. I connected with this sister, uh, I think it was about three or four days ago, and the chemistry was on point. She has a very important initiative that she's launching, an event that will be coming up soon. So she's going to highlight that event that involves the environment and economics. So without further ado, you didn't come here to hear me talk. No, but I like how you talk, so it's all right. It's I'm going to ask our guest to introduce herself. Well, hello, I'll sister. How are you? Too. I'm well. My name is Madeira Rogers Henry. I am um, in the great place of New Orleans, Louisiana. That's my that's my Creole language in my proper English. I love it. And um, I am what we call a recycle advocate and recycle artist. Um, and what that really means and the project I'm working on is called The Recycle Challenge, hashtag The Recycle Challenge. And what I'm asking, starting with people who look like you and me first, because oftentimes we're not part of that conversation. Um, I've been a recycle artist, for example, all the jewelry I'm making with the exception of the phony pearls I've made, but made it out of paper. Wow. And so, you know, and the clothing I make out of linens. So it's very important to understand. I, I understand sustainability, but I've gotten, um, I have a passion and I know it's a calling um, for me to teach what recyclable, um, reusable, repurposable looks like when you're looking at art and making that sustain. So we've created a program that'll be launched on Earth Day. It's been launched for the last four years. We were working with children in New Orleans and we were teaching them how to take cardboard boxes and making them guitars or houses. And this was done with myself and um, Rowena Robinson and her husband. Her husband is a folk artist who works with students on cardboard. So he had these young people creating cardboards and all these things, guitars out of cardboard. So I already knew I was in the right company. And there we were in the classroom. And we started with first teaching children how to take their experience and write. So we have a platform called Who's Magazine, a youth publication. And it, of course, took a break for a while because of COVID. So we have a few students that we worked with, but we still were doing writing. This was before COVID. And we were in the classroom teaching them how to write, articulate. Then I said, it's time to rev this up. And then the kids started to paper dresses, taught them how to do a dress and layering. And then we were right in the thick of it and bam, COVID hit. But that didn't sway the passion that I have because really the opportunity is taking all of these ideas and putting them into an experience where you're teaching children we just finished working with 24 uh, milliners from Nigeria and creating cra craft hats, like hats that are amazing. And these hats are like, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you one because I'm learning to be very tactile. These hats are amazing. It don't look like paper, but they all took the time to learn the platform. And these are what we call paper sustainable hats that we'll be able to begin to introduce in a carnival setting. So April 21st and 22nd is Earth Day. Now we know Earth Day is beautiful, but we're talking people from the soil first, mm -hmm. tending it over, turning it and bring it to life. And what you have is you have us in this conversation of sustainability. And so what this looks like is an online experience on Saturday morning that starts at 8 a.m. and ends to 12 midnight and then on mm, Friday evening here in New Orleans, at five o'clock, we'll be doing Zoom and YouTube experiences so people can see what we're doing because New Orleans do things a little different, you know? So it wouldn't hurt to have a fire eater here or there. Wouldn't hurt to have a band, a youth band, a singer, bam, 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 vending location, you got it. So. That's kind of what we're looking at is having this really serious conversation around recycling, but doing it in, as someone told me, it's kind of artsy. And I kind of go, artsy? I'm like, okay, I won't call it artsy. I just think it's another way to appeal to a generation of people who can, uh, they need to be instead, they need to aesthetically be 
mm, stimulated. And so what we've come up with is this platform, the Recycle Challenge. Yeah. Well, well, Can I take the wind out of you? Don't yeah, let me, you, you know. <laughs> lot, right? My gears are, are going over here. So, you know, this sounds phenomenal. First question oh. I have for you is, how did you get into recycling? I know here recently, mm -hmm. I would say just within the past six months or so, it's something that I've become more conscious of. It's something that I've embraced as a way of life changing uh, my relationship with the earth uh, yes. seeing things from a more uh, yes. like you said sustainable a more yes. holistic perspective seeing myself as a member of a a, a intergalaxy uh community Ooh, uh you, you go. Know, that 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 really uh encouraged <laughs> me to be more mindful yes. of some of my habits but i'm curious to know how did you get into recycling? And, mm -hmm. and for those of us that may look like us, those people of African descent that may say, well, you know, they're recycling stuff. That's for white folk. What, yeah, that's the rumor. There we go. There we go. Well, what we needed to do is ha you need to see it with people who look like you, first of all. OK, so that's part of the problem. Because when you think of recycling, you don't think of black people involved in it. But there is a lot of, when you think of farmers, they're recycling the way you think about farming, okay? They're taking the soil and going back to the planet. Now, we, we understand that there's a lot of um, uh, unfortunate negative um, reactions to farming because we talk about, you know, sharecropping. It wasn't fair. There was no share. There was no, it was just cropping. So you could call it unfair cropping. You know, uh, there was nothing fair about it. Whether you're looking at it from that perspective, the farmer is now becoming urban, which is another key word for black folks, okay? And so now what you're seeing is more black farmers, uh, whether they're urban farmers, whether they're in the country, they are understanding the importance of caretaking the earth and going back to the earth. You gotta go back to it. We gotta change the, the, the unfortunate stereotypes that are keeping us from it. Because we have to understand, everybody needs food. This is not a joke. Everybody needs food. So you're, if you're going back to farming, you're com com completing the cycle of providing something that's a necessity. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to sustain you, right? If you don't have food, you're not going to live on air forever unless you're the dude who lives in the Himalayas who can do that. that that's not me. But we, ne we need to be mindful of the negative connotations that come with it. So farming is one way. When you think of recycling, artsy, okay, you're not thinking Nigerian hat makers, mm -hmm. right? Well, we're thinking Nigerian hat makers because we're making it happen. You, when you think of hat making, you go, oh, okay, just white folks do that. This is not what this is about. It's like starting with us and continuing to let it bloom, but we have to be part of the conversation, which means we have to create of our own narrative. If people want to join in, we're excited. If you don't, that's cool too. But the reality is we must address the unequal, unfair, biased approach to how the word recycling and repurposing looks like, because more of us are not coming up to talk about sustainable fashion, or an ethical fashion, earth-friendly products. There are many of us who are creating, and when I say us, Black folks, Indigenous, who are creating, have been creating things that are savvy for the world, but nobody else is going to know about it, word. So when you're talking about earth-friendly products, eco-friendly products, we're here, but we have not been part of the conversation. So in our experience, you're going to meet boat maker who's in Germany, who's a sister from New Orleans, who's going to take you behind the scenes and show you how she's crafting a boat out of recycled material. That changes the idea. Oh, wow, a boat. You see what I'm saying? And it may, I don't know, I haven't asked her how big the boat is or how small. The point is, even if it's a dinghy, it's a boat, okay? So as we build these conversations around, um, like we have children who are involved in this, we've had children who are crafting paper dresses here in New Orleans, we have the hat makers creating the paper hats in Nigeria. That'll be on, um, we're having a bidding uh, taking place for some of these hats because they'll be available for sale. Um, you have the, the lady I just mentioned, who's the artist. You're gonna have even a performer. Now this is a little risky, but she's a burlesque performer. Very well known. She's gonna be doing Josephine Baker. What does Josephine Baker look like to talk about recycling? Guess what? In, in her earlier and later times, 
she was very aware of taking care of the earth. Now, if you really think about Josephine Baker, you don't think of her taking care of the earth. But she was mother nature. She understood the beauty of the body. She understood the beauty of the body and the voice. Now, I'm not saying all of us are coming from the same point because some people are like, oh, that's too risky. I'm understanding that, but this is not safe. This is not, it just looks arty, but it's not safe. We're even having discussions with people from as far as Tanzania, New Orleans, Colorado, um, and one other, and Mali, talking about what we're doing right now to sustain those particular things. Like someone I found out in Ghana is doing bricks made out of plastic, okay? It's really important to have these kind of fa these fa familiar conversations. I get so excited because it's just, it's a time that's come to its, its time. It, we've been so indoctrined to all these other things that we have to go back to nature. We have to go back to nature. We have to respect nature. And I'm not expecting everybody to be granola, but I am expecting everybody to be mindful that there is a journey that happens. And when I took the journey, it was 11 years ago. And that was about the time I got married. And my husband is very, um, well, he was the kind of dude in college that already was wearing a bald head and everybody's wondering why you got your head bald. He was already natural. He was already there. Um, but when we got married, he kind of gave me the uh, insight to say, you know, you're an artist. I said, look, bro, I'm not no artist. He's, yeah, man, you really are. You can do this, this, and this, and this. And it took me a moment to think of myself as an artist. And from that moment on, um, before we even got married, I got dreams about how my wedding dress and jewelry was supposed to look, right? I woke up, I said, hey, I haven't sold in 30 years. Let me go get a sewing machine. And I don't know how I'm going to do these jewelry, but I've got instructions from the creator and I'm going to do it. Guess what? Next day, I got up and started doing this stuff, and I started grabbing stuff at our house. My husband thought I was going crazy. I was sewing. I made his, his wedding um, kofi and his pants. I made mine. I made my jewelry. That's what birthed it for me, because I could see the connection from making something sustainable from nothing, because it becomes obvious that you become a producer. You're producing your own clothes, producing your own food, producing your own club, produce, it's clear. Um, and so that's kind of the foo-foo conversation is that we need to be mindful that we have to become producers and anyone in Ulu already knows this to be so. So it's not on deaf ears that I'm having this conversation. So I think that for me, the passion in getting into this is saying, we have to change our narratives and we hear it, we keep hearing it, but we're not changing it. So I, I have to be proactive. And my proactiveness is saying, it's time for you to do this. So we are starting here in New Orleans, um, but the goal is we have support systems from Africa, uh, Colorado, Florida, Germany. I mean, if that's us right now today, where are we going to be in a year? And in a year, it's going to look completely brilliantly beautiful. So I'm just honored to be able to share this that will take place online and in person. So people who are in New Orleans, um, it, they are more than welcome to attend. There is a donation that we're asking people to do, and that's really kind of it. But there'll be vendors, there'll be music. We're asking people, bring your own lawn chair, your own you know, if you want to drive your own little cute recycled thing, whatever it is, just show up and have fun and let's celebrate nature in a way that pulls us all together. But let's also be clear, we're trying to balance the playing field. We have to be part of the conversation. And in order to be the conversation, you have to make up the conversation. You, you have to create the, the Twitter. You got to create the Instagram. You have to be the ones talking about it. And, and I'm comfortable with doing that. Um, I don't want to be part of someone else's thing because that's not it. What we're doing to me is the closest thing I know to change the vibratorial um, wrongs. I'm saying it just the way I feel it. 
the vibratorial wrongs that have been done. You cannot not include people of color and indigenous people in any kind of conversation. It has nothing to do with, um, oh, we need to make sure our numbers are here. You just can't do it. You have to be clear that that has to be met first. So you have to include people of color. You have to include indig indigenous in this conversation so that you fully understand that indigenous people have been recycling and repurposing for years and centuries and they're continuing to do it. We in America and European influences are the ones who don't get with the program because we've been so trained to be respect what is bright and white, what is black get back, what is brown comes to town. You, you know the routine. It's apparent, it's alive, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's, it's what it is. So that's my, that's my Bible, I just stated it. So it's just really important that if we don't have this opportunity, it's okay, someone else will come along too because the cool thing is the ideas recirculate. You know, but I'd rather it start with us. It's really preferred, much preferred. Well, so there I, we go. I appreciate uh, the fact <laughs> that we connected and we have you on uh, the New Reality Forum, which is a program under the media and marketing uh, arm of Us Lifting Us. And, and what I love about Us Lifting Us is that I get to unite with uh, like-minded mm. people like yourself that see the value in self-determination, sovereignty, uh, even economic impact on a global global perspective. You're talking about mm. having Ghana and Germany and folks yeah. all over the world, you know, uh, involved in this process. Uh, one of the things that we're focusing on is health and wellness. And so I I'm guess. curious to know, from your perspective, how does recycling, farming, how does returning to the earth, how, how does that tie into the, the collective uh, health and wellness of people of African descent? Excellent question, and I have an excellent answer. Um, one of the components to what we're doing is both of our queens, one is queen of the church dress, and one is queen of the sunflower dress. Both are naturalists or vegan chefs or um, naturopaths. They have the awareness of caretaking the body, right? So one of the platforms we'll be doing here in New Orleans, we have bicycling as one of the things. So we have two different bicycle groups that we'll be partnering with. Um, and know that these are not all black bicycle groups. These are open. But what we'll be doing is when these bicycle groups stop by this location in New Orleans, they get a chance to experience tasting vegan desserts, many, many meals, um, understanding um, health codes, understanding caretaking. So each of our queens are very um, aware of caretaking us as human beings, because if you think about it, what's inside us is outside. If you think of a tree, that can become what? Our veins or our lung or our heart. If you look at it from a different, what is in is what's out. Mm. In is out. Principles of life. So it's very important to understand that as we caretake ourselves. It's being mindful of how we put things in and understand I am one of these who likes sugar, can't eat it, but once a year, I kind of, you know, kind of get on this little, oh, let me sneak in some peanut brittle, oh, yummy, and I already know it's not good, but it's not something I'm going to be doing every day. So it's being mindful that when you are incorporating health and wellness, you have to have people around you who still include that in our conversations because you cannot repurpose and recycle and reduce waste without thinking of it as a human experience. Now, it sounds very tactile, you know, paper waste, but it's also what we put in our minds, word. Because if you don't recycle what you put in your minds, you become what you are. You become what you eat. You become, so if you eat a lot of greasy foods every day, at some point your skin starts getting incredibly oily. You start seeing zits. You start seeing things. You can only um, expect for 
clotting of the arteries and things to take place because you are creating the environment again to sustain that type of behavior. So if you're eating um, all amazing oily foods and fattening foods and foods that are supposed to mess with your mind and your body, that's what happens. So the same environment that we're talking about for Mother Earth is the same environment because we're part of Mother Earth, are we not? So if we don't care about ourselves, but yet you're going to go out and you're going to recycle your trash, but you can't care and understand that if you care, take the carbon footprint of life, you, can't, you take care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to see that they're they're all interactive because when I made that shift about recycling, I changed how I ate. Okay. Um, I am more of a plant beast, plant based. I'm a plant beast as well as plant based <laughs> eater because I love to eat and living in new Orleans doesn't really mess with me because I, I kind of have a routine, but I am not a disciplined eater. I love food. Food loves me, but I do eat more plant based than anything um and i think that that's what helps me look younger um because being over 60 something you kind of people go hey you're not 60 and then you pull out your yeah hey, that's right that's right look at that that's right it's a brutal it's a beautiful thing when you know that because what you listen to was right but i can always be better too so how the outside affects the inside is because it's all part of our thinking processes when you begin to shift outside, it's automatic that inside shifts. It's, it's, it's pretty automatic. So for me, I could say that it's a very important connection when you're doing it on this basis because you become a caretaker. No matter how big or small of your community it, it is, starting with healthy living and healthy eating brings to mind healthy thinking you know um and that is really important because we, we if we don't take care of ourselves no one's going to do it for you um and another thing is we know that the african-american community and indigenous communities are in a very uh serious state of mind especially with covid um it has covid has forced many of us to become um Huh. junk junkies where we crave things that you know we shouldn't because we've had to be on zoom um, most of us who do work um, most of my life is zoom so when i go out to get some fresh air or walk in the background backyard with my my shoes off i can ground myself connect with the earth and know that the earth is there i can feel it if i go take a walk which i don't even have time to do because my schedule um, start sometimes very early, like five in the morning, because five in the morning here is seven hours later in Nigeria, and you you have to be ready, you know, because what changes is your is your mindset and your schedule. Um, but I do know that if anyone doesn't believe that, here here is something that just struck me. We crave things for several reasons, because there's a void in our lives or there is something you're not doing. So if you think of the void and you think of what you're not doing and you can address that, then the shift will change. Mm -hmm. So we crave things like food. I had to check myself on this, so that's why I got real quiet. Um, because I'm not a doctor in this, but I can tell you I'm a human being that's put this into practice um, and can tell you that if you, you continue on the path of eating things that your body starts to break down in a way that you kind of notice, huh, why, why am I having that ink there? Or why is it that I can't, or why does my face look puffy? And when you see puffy, it's inflammation because you're eating sugar or things that are starchy. Or if you find that you have phlegm in your throat, it's because you're eating more sugar or mucus forming things. And, and people feel it and notice, but they don't think it's part of their body. It, the body tells you everything you need to know. 
we'll even on that. good days, even on bad days. Mm -hmm. It's the most accurate thing about us. What's inaccurate is how we think about our bodies. So if we don't love ourselves, you're not going to love your body. Mm -hmm. I'm, d I'm just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't love your planet, just remember the planet could be gone in a flink of an eye because mother nature doesn't give us warning. It just happens. A flood, a fire, a snowstorm, a, you know, a raging fire, a tsunami, a whatever it is. She is clear about purging and cleansing when she needs to purge and cleanse. Mm -hmm. So since we have no control over it, shame on us for thinking we have control of the earth. What we need to get a control over is who we are. I speak for myself. I'm, I must demand more control for myself. I have to ask better of myself. And yet I'll sit here and talk it and get out and I'll go, okay, let me go get a, a, a yam instead of craving a peanut brittle. Yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So I think that one of the ways we've addressed it is that we have women who are our queens because that is something very popular in New Orleans is that we have queens for Mardi Gras, but we also at some point will become a crew that'll be part of Mardi Gras in the next couple of years. So since I don't have a, a teacher to teach me that, I have to kind of do this on my own, in my own terms, in my own way. So being healthy allows me to think different, but it also allows me to be really human. So if I don't know something, I'm very clear to tell a lot of these young whippersnappers, look, I'm very uncomfortable with how overwhelmed I am. And I'll be, and I'm saying, I'm just telling you now, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to handle it. And as soon as I get it in check, I'll let you know. Well, how come you're, I said, I just said, you. I don't know why I'm acting this way, but what yeah. I'm gonna tell you is I'm out of, I'm out of sorts with myself. And since I'm out of sorts, it means I'm out of control. And since I'm out of control, I have to tell you I'm vulnerable. And I talk like that. And it's okay. I'm not embarrassed. But I don't think everybody can appreciate the fact that we've all been put on this earth to be great human beings. I'm just striving to be a better human being. That's all. You know? And if I can do something that saves myself and, and people with me, man, I think I'm onto something. That's all I know. Spirit has told me I'm onto something. And so if I'm onto something and then I hear people confirming you're onto something, then I know it's on to something. It's something. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, I'm imagining, you know, we have members of us lifting us that'll be viewing this uh, recording as well as non-members alike. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're full of energy and I'm feeling <laughs> very motivated. I'm feeling very inspired, but even challenged. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we like to do uh, in the new reality form is to offer some very practical, uh, you know, small tidbits, right? Small practical things that people can do right now, because this may seem overwhelming, right? It may mm -hmm. take people a while to get to the place that you're at. So I have two questions first and foremost mm -hmm. for that person that says man i really i'm really enjoying her energy i'm really enjoying her story and the work that she's embarking upon i think i want to be more conscious of the life that i live and the impact that it leaves mm -hmm. on this earth uh what are some some small things that people can do almost immediately maybe maybe some moral that they can implement in their life to uh, make an impact and to lead to a more sustainable, more harmonious, more just even uh, experience for all of us. Second question I have is we are an economic cooperative. And so I'm curious to know, as you see it, what are some economic opportunities uh, mm. that uh, or present or that we can even create, right? Because us lifting us is about creating and highlighting, uh, you know, solutions to some of the problems that we face. What are some very real economic solutions that will move us in the direction of sovereignty uh, within the sustainability recycling space? Well, those are, those are really great questions, Robert. I'm like blown away by that. Um, because I'm sitting here going, holy moly, 
That's like, you're acting like I'm an expert. I'm just a Yahoo chick, right? Right, subject matter. So expert. it's kind of like, I'm going, wow. Okay, so let me tell you about these small steps. I'll give you an example. When the Nigerian hat makers joined us, here they are making these amazing hats, right? But I said, you cannot use anything you've got to buy. They're like, what? <laughs> they went, what? So you got to use paper, something you already have. The only thing you can buy is glue. That's the only thing you can buy is glue. Okay, so I said, that's the first step. And so what I would say to someone who's thinking of it from a perspective, from there's two aspects. There's an artist perspective and there is um, an everyday Joe, okay? Or Joanna. Mm -hmm. So with the artist, I send out a challenge to ask you to join us in the challenge, okay? It doesn't cost anything. Um, if you want to attend events and workshops, that might cost you something, maybe your time, registering your email, sending a donation because money does go to nonprofits. So we are making sure that you know that the money we have made have gone to hire people who look like us, right? So that in itself is accept the challenge. And I will have a challenge for you that you'll sit and you'll go, oh my God, I never saw this coming. But you may be able to challenge me as well. You may have something that you're already doing that I don't know about. And you might wanna say, I would like to see you challenge this and let's, let's take the recycle challenge this way. So that's the first thing people can do as an artist or a human being is just to accept the challenge. And what I will do is send you a note and say, okay, What's your, what, what do you like to do? And they're like, I, I always want to plant. So I say, look, here's the challenge. Do you know anyone in your neighborhood? And they'll go, no, I don't know a farmer. I said, get to know a farmer. And I said, and, and don't go to the farmer's market up the street. Find a farmer from Mississippi. Find a farmer from Tennessee. Find a farmer um, who's has Hispanic or black or whatever. Find that farmer and get to know them and buy from them and ask them how they can assist you in being sustainable. That would be most important because that's food. So if you don't know someone who grows, you watch videos, watch things, start with the small thing, start with the green onions in your house or basil. I know this sounds crazy, this is simple. Buy a basil and let it grow and take from that basil and find a chive. The next time you throw away your chive, plant it, in a cup of water and let it grow roots, then take it and plant it. Sounds crazy, but this is true. If you have a onion, cut off the top, turn the onion upside down, put it in water and let it grow roots and plant it. Go on YouTube and learn how to do that. That's my first little simple smack because everybody eats something, whether it's organic food or unorganic food, you gotta start where you are. So plant something simple. That's my first step. So the next step, recycling at home, cut your carbon footprint. Most people go, what's a carbon footprint? You look outside on the street. Everybody has a day that the garbage people come. Some people have trash that's outside of their garbage flowing on the ground into the street. That's a person with high, high carbon footprint. That means that in your home, you probably go in that they're not doing any kind of composting in their home, meaning after you eat your food, I'm giving you small, simple things. Instead of taking your vegetables and throwing them away, compost them, save them in your freezer. I know this sounds crazy. Find a little section that you can save in your freezer. Find that farmer that you were talking to. Ask that farmer, can you give them each week something that goes into their garment, gardens called compost? You take it to that gardener and you give it to him. That is how you can reduce your, your food waste. Food waste is very big. If you found a way to cut your food waste by taking only the vegetables that you use, carrots, onions, um, even watermelon seeds, and find a way to repurpose them into a small plant and then plant them. That's my first step. So start repurposing your food waste okay so if you repurpose your food waste in your city find in your city or your country find someone who does food recycling meaning you can take it 
You give it to them and they'll recycle your food. There are places that are starting like this and maybe what I might need to do is expand on this and find out where they are all over the world. Because if you knew that you could take some place and give them your food that you throw out and it goes and it stinks up the landfills, you could be doing an amazing thing. Okay, I'm giving you a lot of little ideas. It might be too much, Robert. Cut me when, when you need me to stop. Um, so that would be one thing. The next thing is if you want to take it further, invest in a teeny weeny little recycling compost. There are machines where you can take the food that we were just talking about and putting it in these machines and it'll become soil. Did you hear what I said? It becomes soil. So you're saying, why would I want to collect soil? Because you could sell soil. You can take it and put it in your garden. You can give it to your neighbor. You can give it to the woman up the street who actually gardens. And you might say, hey, I made some compost for you. You see the difference in how we're thinking? Yeah. Our neighbors and our friends, our family bring us their compost, okay? We just have a new system that collects, removes water off our property. Because in New Orleans, we have a lot of flooding. So we have a system that collects the water, goes underneath the, underneath the soil and puts the water back out in the street. So we lost our composting. So we're getting ready to do a bin composting. And as soon as I get that, I'm gonna show you how that works. So that's what I would do first little steps, teeny weeny little steps like that. Now for the person who is really ready, let's say you're already doing gardening. Let's say you're already doing your own composting. Let's say you're going, hmm, I already am doing all of this. Well, the good news is you need to teach people how to do it because this is part of the beauty to caretaking. You have to teach people. If you don't have someone, call me. I'll have a platform for you. Teach people how to do this because people don't know. Some people don't know that they can do this pretty easy. There are people walking around who have green thumbs that have no clue. So those are my small, simple steps that I would take is start with food because that is the biggest waste. The second biggest waste is plastic, plastic and paper. Again, get your plastic and paper and sort it. Yes, you have someone who comes and picks it up every week, but find someone in your community, like take it to the recycling plant yourself so you can see the system because some of it makes sense. Some of it really does make sense. And if you can begin to take your 99% plastic and paper and start bundling it and giving it to someone who could really use it, because in your community, you might find that there is a recycling center like in, in Seattle, I believe, I might be wrong. They had a place where you could go and take your recycling things because students and teachers would go there to get things they needed for the classroom, okay? And so if you don't know of that, think of where you can do, search that out on the internet and start taking that trash that you get rid of and try to minimize your carbon footprint. Instead of it being 99 overflowing, try to start with that five or 20% that you throw out as food and finding a way to take that food and change it. Even if it's digging your own hole in your backyard and turning that soil, because if you turn the soil over time, your soil is rich when you start seeing worms. My husband did it. I don't do it. My husband do it because I told you I'm on Zoom all the time. So he's the one who is really getting into this, but we see the benefits of that. So those are the small steps you can take. Clothing, find a recycling place, Take it to Goodwill. Don't throw anything or have a swap party with people. This sounds crazy. Everybody's like, that's white people stuff. You're right. They are. But there are some people who in the old days, remember when you had an uncle and your uncle's uncle, y'all used to hand stuff down. It was nice looking stuff. You didn't throw it away. We got to go back to that taking care of each other. Pass it around. Someone you know could use the clothes that you're throwing out. Everybody can't be buying expensive clothes. And everybody doesn't want to buy expensive clothes. So whatever you decide to do, you can really find ways to cut down on your food consumption, cut down on your plastic consumption, go to products that don't have 
this bulky plastic stuff. Shop at food co-ops. Co-ops. Every city has a co-op. Look at a co-op to shop in. Find ways to cut all of that plastic, all of that crap, because when you take it home, you got to throw it out. So if you know that you can cut down your plastic, your food, your paper, your textiles, you are cutting down your trash to probably be about 50%. You're going to laugh when I tell you this. We do not have a trash can in our kitchen. Mm, wow. I could take you there now and show you. If you'd like me to show you, I can prove it to you because we, I said you don't, we're not going to collect things. So we have a recycling bin for plastics. We have a trash bin that's underneath. We take that trash, we put it away. We take that recycling and put it out or we take it to the city to recycle it. Or I use most of the paper, newspapers and cardboards for my jewelry and my artists in recycling. So we really are a family that is very sustained in regards to cutting how we do. In our freezer, we do not freeze food. We freeze compost to well, take it down what, to farm. I tell you what, you, you're my motivation. And like I said, you're challenging me to even look at my own. Okay. And, and, and I really I, want to hear you say that you did something because most of us don't think that way, but if you can start changing little things in your house, you'll start seeing some things that'll be different. Now, the last question I'm gonna answer, which I think you asked was, what's the solution to sustainability economically? Am I correct? All right. Yeah, what are some of the economic opportunities? Uh, okay. Yep. I am a person who creates jewelry from paper. So my jewelry from paper, it has taken me, <laughs> Embarrassingly, it's taken me like 10 years to prove that I can take earrings, make belts, make this, the stuff behind me, all from, all from scraps. So if I know that I can do that and I sell that, when I met with my products in Miami and I sold one of my earrings, I knew that those earrings garnered $90. Now, people go, $90? Yes, I'm not embarrassed by that in saying that. Because the earrings I make, it takes me sometimes close to five to 10 hours to make little earrings with pearls. I use my hands. I mold them. And you're sitting here going, oh, it's just trash. You're right. It is trash. But that is a way for me to sustain myself. I can wear new earrings that nobody else has. I have jewelry that people be sitting and going, where'd you get that? And I go, I made it. And I said, it's not paper. It is paper. So if we can become producers, think about it. If I could sell in which we are, I take the hats from Nigeria that are made from what? Nothing. If they make $25 and the nonprofit makes $5, that's a $30 hat. If we get a bid for 50, that market goes, then yeah. you see where I just did? Okay. So if we know that we're getting ready for a carnival experience for 223, people are going to order their hats from us, which we get from Nigeria. We know that every time we hand out a package to someone, you're going to have a VIP swap bag that looks like throws, which we call in New Orleans. These are throws. These are necklaces. They're beads. They're chains. All made from what? Recycled material. Do you see the numbers? Mm -hmm. So if you can start, if the farmer grows something, he grew and he takes it to the market and he's doing just greens mm -hmm. and he's charging $5 a bunch and he has a hundred bundles, there's numbers there. Yeah. If the guy in Tanzania is growing cashews and they're going to ship them here and we're buying from him cashews and we know that those cashews are $10 a pound and he has over 50,000 pounds, do you see the numbers? Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to tell you that the solution is become a producer. It's to become a producer of things that people sell. Now, I have to admit, it takes, it has taken me a very long time to perfect my brand. 
And to be able to say that I can make jewelry, I can make this, it's taking me that long. But next, what we're getting ready to try it out on in April is some people will get care packs and they'll be able to go, oh my God, look at this. I got a hat. I got, I got a, what, 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 you know, that's when we can say we're on, we, we know that we're on the right track. When we can do hand fans and we can do umbrellas and we can do keychains. This is the, the part I'm making with an artist. So the artist who's listening to this, if you can paint and you can repurpose and you can use that and you can say, maybe I don't need to buy my canvases. Maybe I can make my own canvases. I can show you how to make your own canvases without spending this amazing amount of money on canvases. So the solution is that becoming independent producer yes you're gonna have some headaches now i also have to tell you there's headaches mm -hmm. but they're far better for me right now it is now coming to where i see a flow of like whoa it's starting to happen people are starting to get it and all i do is teach you a workshop on how to do this no cost to you you have to just decide that you want to do the challenge and the challenge looks like this hey, I want to make my life better. So I say to you, Robert, let's do a challenge. The challenge is I want to recycle myself. So if that's the goal and you're going to be part of the challenge, I call you and I say, okay, so this is what your training looks like. You are an organizer. So what I want to challenge you with is let's create a recycle challenge in your city. Let's create something there. Let's use your skills. Let's use this. Let's put you in touch with these people so that we can begin to mold what it is we need to do to make this world a better place because it's obvious no one else is going to do it for us mm -hmm. i need us to be clear about that yeah. and waiting for some knight in shining armor we're the knights we're the armor and we're the shining that's who we are our wow. mission on earth we don't know how long but while you're here you need to grasp every moment like a lasso, you circle it around the sun, you grab it, you smile, and you keep moving. And that's what this big thing is about. It is not about only recycling. It's let's recycle, recycle our spirits. Let's recycle, recycle our mind, our thinking, our spiritual connectedness to each other, the risk taking, and let's go back like what Ulu is believing. Let's be mindful of global coming together and uniting because it does work. It is working. But what we have to do is become that example. And some of us aren't going to be here in the time when those who come before us or after us will continue to make it work. But we need to be mindful that solutions are become a producer of what it is you want. Do not rely on anyone other than you to create what you need. If you're an artist, you're spending over thousands of dollars buying canvases. What if there is a way that you could create your own canvas by using what you have around? And so as an artist, I already know I've proven that. So the, the, the blessing is you are a blessing. So when you become a producer, you become a blessing. We're already a walking blessing, but you become a blessing because you share it with others. You're sharing with others. What could this look like? It could look perfect, perfectly right and perfectly all messed up. But whatever, it's like a gumbo, you know? And if you don't take the risk, you'll never know. So the solution is to become a producer, which is where I started within this conversation. You have to go back and produce what it is you do the most. If you eat, produce your own food or find someone who can in your family. If you, um, you like to wear a lot of clothes, find someone locally you can produce, who can work with in creating your own clothes, create your own clothes. Cut your costs, learn to start looking at this bottom line differently. Even though you might be making over 100,000 or 300,000, whatever that's about, I got that, we've all been there. But the reality is cut your costs because the world is changing. The systems in which we think are here look at what covid did for us look at where we were three years ago and we would all say oh we'll never be there look at where we are right now huh mm -hmm. so it's very important for us to think of that as a solution become a producer yeah well you you've dropped a lot on this you've dropped a lot in our spirit you've encouraged us you've motivated us uh 
you've given us guidance and we definitely appreciate you. Uh, you're, you know, you're always welcome to come back to the new reality platform. In fact, Thank I would you. love to do a follow up. Uh, of course you would. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Before we close though, yes. I would love for those that are viewing this uh, recording whenever or wherever they are, if they want to get in contact with you, if they want to learn more about the challenge, uh, please share with them your, your information. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm honored for your time, Robert. It is appreciated. And the Ulu family, I'm just so honored and thankful that you gave me this as a platform. It's just like it says, www.the dash recycle dash challenge.com if you go to the recycle challenge.com you will see this beautiful page that looks kind of like wow it's a empty bottle in the water you'll see it and then you can pretty much reach out and make contact with us we are on instagram as the i believe it's the one recycle challenge um you can look for me um on Facebook, which is The Recycle Challenge. So we're pretty consistent with keeping that platform. And if people want to, to, to do that, please know that on our webpage, you can do that. We're also on Twitter. Um, it's very important to know that we are socially savvy. Um, my new schedule has forced me to pretty much, I can produce a video a day, but I can't respond to everyone. Um, it's getting kind of amazingly cool, but now I'm kind of going like, Rah! how, okay, I got to handle this success a little different now. You know, someone reaches out to me, I'm like, hey, how are you? Okay, or I do audio. Hey, it's good talking to you. Oh, peace to you. All right, take care. I can do that quicker than writing. So I'm having to come up with, I do follow through on people, but again, it's therecyclechallenge.com. You can say the recycle challenge or put dashes between us, but it's the recyclechallenge.com. Um, we are on Facebook as the recycle challenge. I think it's recycle challenge or the recycle project. I'm not sure, but it's something like that. And then on um, Instagram, we're the one recycle challenge. So you'll be able to find us if you put that in. Um, and then, of course, getting in touch with anyone from Ulu, um, that would be great, too. And I am a Ulu member, so I have to make sure I upgrade my profile after this coming out for this weekend so that people know how to reach out to me. And, of course, you can find me, me, Madiri Rogers Henry. Um, I will make sure I change my profile to the Recycle Challenge so I can be reached out here. So, um, Ulu family, it's just been an honor. Thank you so much for tolerating my antics and my joy of living and my celebratory mm, posturing. But I do not want anyone to think that this is a joke, that this is funny, um, because it's a very serious matter. Um, the planet is changing, and it will change whether we're here or not, okay? Let's be clear. Someone say, oh, we're harming the planet. You're right, it's already done. Sorry, folks. Okay, this is, we can't, oh man, when you know, and it's from Nanana. I have to call her back. Um, <laughs> Mama we, Nanana. We're, we're already in trouble. We're already in trouble. You can't change what's happening. It's already out of kilter. So we can't, our efforts are going to make a difference. So if we can change how we make a difference, mm -hmm. my belief is this. we already proven that you can't chant yourself to a better world. Mm -hmm. But you can chant and believe it and do it, conceive it, and do it, and be action, and be with each other. That changes the vibration. You can't just say, oh, I'm a yoga person, and I'm cool. If you don't believe in honoring your elder and where you learned your lesson, if you don't believe in honoring your, your yogi teacher who taught you that, and you go, I've been studying yoga for 15 years, so it makes me a pro, but you don't honor the person who taught you, shame on you. That's part of how we shift all of this. We have to go back to honoring each other. We have to go back to honoring our elders. I have folks who are older than me and they're my elders. I honor them. Um, it's important that we have to go back to civility because it is no place. There's, it's not seen right now. I don't see it. 
I, I don't see civility. And even though Black Lives Matter, we still act like we don't matter to each other. And so just chanting it doesn't change it word you got to do it you have to take the steps you have to do the principles of living you have to know you know you have to know all the things that our ancestors taught tried to teach us and we have to know what's clear about us living on this earth and that's our you know our 42 laws of confession we have to know all those you know what i mean you got to know you got to know you got to know what the book of the, the dead is about. You got to you got to understand even if you look at the hieroglyphics you'll get it that this is something beyond your own comprehension then you'll get it that we were here. You got to you got to understand that there is a bigger picture for this but it really does not change by just us saying I believe it I believe it because it ain't conceiving. That's not what that's not what's happening. So you got you got to really work on that family. So um, I'm just kind of saying it's just um, it's a great day to uh, to be alive um, mm -hmm. and it's a good day to care for the planet um, and it's a good day to know that the planet doesn't care if we're here or not. It will be what it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? The planet is just giving us the luxury of being here. Mm -hmm. It's just that's all it is. It's, it's, it's saying it's for free, but we've been the ones that take it and we've abused it and we've confused it with, oh, I can manipulate the planet. You can't manipulate the planet. Mm -hmm. The planet is going to do what it's going to do with us or without us. And be mindful that in a flash of a moment, it could be without us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's very important to understand that um, this is a serious matter of us understanding that caretaking the planet plants the seed for us to shift things vibrationally. Mm -hmm. It's really about yeah. the vibrations that we put into the planet. Well, I, I definitely thank you for bringing the positive vibrations and raising the vibrations here. And I'm sure that those uh, people that are watching this will feel that vibration and have their vibrations elevated. Family, I just want to thank you for tuning in wherever you are, whenever you're saying this. This is a pre recorded episode. Uh, if you are a member of Us Lifting Us and would like for us to highlight your business, feel free to reach out to the New Reality Forum. If you are not a member of Us Lifting Us and you want to learn what this whole economic cooperative is about that promotes self determination, economic so sovereignty, you can visit www.uslifting.us. Dot com. Until the next time, family, love, peace, and liberation.